Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oscar Best Driver here, joined by Thomas as always, and we are talking about Asteroid City, the latest Wes Anderson film. Now, if you know something about me, I'm a pretty big Wes Anderson fan. I like him a lot. Um, Thomas, I don't. Not, I don't. No. Not a very big Wes Anderson fan, and yet, and yet, we've converted him to Christ. Um, well, I wouldn't Thomas, go that far. I wouldn't go that far. I do like some Wes Anderson films, so this is not like. A complete left turn. Like I like Fantastic Mr. Fox. I like Grand Budapest. I just think a lot of his work is quite repetitive and a bit cold. And I don't know if this is entirely entirely untrue about this film as well. Like it is still playing on a lot of Wes Anderson yeah. beats. A lot of the emotion doesn't always work for me, and a lot of the humor, particularly, is just not my kind of humor. So that doesn't work. However, I do think there is a lot to love about this film, which I'm sure we'll get to. I'm, I, I think there is a lot to really like in this film. Yeah, I like as someone who's a West Anderson fan. I think this is one of his best, genuinely. I agree. Um, I agree. Like it, it plays. I, I think it's his most thematic and his most thoughtful work. Um, it, it, he's diving into um his like his different like artistic philosophies in a way that I've really never seen him explore before. Um, and we're going to talk about spoilers. I think it's yeah. very hard to talk about this film without spoilers. So if you haven't and it's been it. out for a bit now, so like yeah, yeah, I mean it's been limited release for a little bit, so like yeah, we should be. And it made a lot of money, so most people have seen it apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to see, it, you probably have. Um, but yeah, so the the entire framing device of the film is about a a telecast of a stage play about the writing of the play Asteroid City. Yeah. If yeah, I've got so, that correctly. I think so, yeah. A lot of plays within plays. Once you sort of grasp what the narrative framing device is going for, you can sort of just put it out of your mind and just appreciate what, what yeah. is sort of going on. Because it's not, like, confusing. It may sound confusing on the first surface, but it's yeah. really not. And I, I like guess. how it wasn't marketed that way. No, no. I thought the marketing for this film was very well done, actually, where yeah. it just sort of gives you the final sort of layer that you'll be, you'll be seeing. But, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, as we're watching this, you know, telecast play with him playing and everything, like it immediately, immediately, we're getting into meta modernism. And I honestly feel like this this film is like the epitome of like the meta modernist movement, and like yes, everything that's surrounding it, as far as like art within art and using art within art within art as a reflection of the own artist's thoughts of art, and you know, like. And I think this is a very logical place for Wes Anderson to go because so much of his work is centered around pastiche and like, you know, playing yeah. off of other films. And, um, you know, you can only do that for so long until you're creating pastiche of your own work, right? Yes, because I mean, so much of Wes Anderson's work is about him as well. Like you go to Wes yes. Anderson film because it's a Wes Anderson film, you know what you're getting. And mm -hmm. that's why I was less sort of annoyed by that. I guess the repetitive sort of stylistic elements all of that kind of stuff he does because it is actively playing on them and it's saying something different about them, not just sort of showing them again. Like I think it was in a film like The French Dispatch, which I was not a big fan of. So that's why I think I was less sort of baffled by these elements and less annoyed by them. Yeah, and a lot of like the, um, like I love the very deliberately, uh, like uh, kind of cold to the audience moments where it's like essentially, you know, constantly reminding the audience that they are watching a film like yeah and like just letting you know let, not letting the audience fully get attached into the story um and uh very much playing with audiences expectations of of what they're going to be getting with the film and like i like that in general but i think it really works here because that is literally the entire narrative framing device yes this is the first time where that sort of structure and that sort of form elements are actually married to the story like a lot of times i just think well why is this story need to be told in this way without that web land films like why do you need to be so cold of it yeah. is there not a way whereas this one i understand i understand what it is going for yeah and i do think it's purposeful i still don't think it completely works and it still isn't one of my like favorites of year or anything like that because it still does leave me quite cold but yeah i appreciate the coldest going. necessarily the correct word about the tone of the film like i think it can leave people cold but yeah. i'd say like mechanical is because like i think the yes. film is a, like west Anderson interesting films as a whole are typically very warm feeling i would say and like you know like they're very like typically focused around like family and things like that like 
Uh, but I think, yeah, it can leave you cold just because of how deliberately mechanical it is. Yes, I think you, there's a lack of maybe a connection between the audience and the stuff yeah, that has happened. which is very deliberate. Like, it's deliberate, but he, yes, a lot of times it'll I, work I for want them. that connection. Yeah. yeah. Whereas that, that does really work for me. But like, yeah. I think regardless, that is just a testament to like, he's, you know, whether you like it or not, he's doing, he's achieving really well what he's going for. Yes, um, I, and I always have respect that about Wes Anderson. He always swings, and he is always at least going for something. Just yes, it doesn't quite. For sure, for sure. So within the film, we're very much exploring. I mean, these ideas of, I, I guess, like Wes Anderson's own life. I think you can very much see him as the playwright. Oh, and I think of, it is heavily implied that he is. Yeah, that he is just. And all of that. the actors are almost the actors within Astrid City, not understanding it, and Wes yeah. Anderson almost not really getting it, and kind of becoming tired with his own work and his own pastiche and everything going on. And there are so many things that feel like typical Wes Anderson tropes that he just kind of leaves unfinished, just like you know the unfinished highway. Um, and it's all things about, you know, un, un, unfinished and everything feels unresolved or it doesn't feel entirely warm because it isn't about the people within Astro City. And I think he balances the ensemble so well in that you still end up caring about all of the inhabitants of Astro City, this, you know, fictional place within a fictional place within a fictional place. But like, it, it isn't about them. It's really about like how they all take on as like manifestations of different um like mind childs brain childs of the writer yeah and i think the unfinished aspect is particularly important because i think it allows the film to feel more personal like it feels more freer yes. than most of where anderson works a lot of them feel very structured very rigid like i remember there was this art that he had people blink on cue on the french yeah. dispatch and just like that is a step too far we don't need that i i'm happy this i film disagree but did feel, I see where you're coming from. I'm, I'm happy that this one did have that ability to feel more loose and structured to feel like we're just sort of exploring these elements it's whereas, broken in a way yes like exactly way. and i and i do think that in turn and add with anderson to develop these more personal ideas i feel like i had more of a personal connection to what the filmmaker was trying to to convey here. yeah because he's asking you to connect with him and not the characters yes which not is... the characters yeah which is i think he's tried to maybe do before but it's never worked in the same way as it has here because his personal I mean, voice comes for a lot more. Yes. No, I, I mean, I, I completely agree. I think that this is his best attempt at doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's like, I just think that those themes and going this very, in, like very, very far down the rabbit hole of metamodernism works with his style and his form so well. Like... I think that this like meta modernist movement is like one of the best things to happen to Wes Anderson. Cause again, I'm a very big Wes Anderson fan. Like I think that this is just, yeah, like some of the best stuff he's ever worked on. Um, just because the more he leans into this and I hope that we keep on seeing, like we saw him dip into meta modernism a little bit with French dispatch. Um, and then just full tilt here. Like yeah. I just hope he keeps on going further down the rabbit hole because yeah, I mean, probably the next film will be exploring the reactions to this and, and his process making this yeah. film or a film like this. So, this, yes, this it'll be interesting much like, going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. It did very much feel like a reaction to almost his criticisms. Um, yeah. And the pastiche and, like, you know, the, the mechanical nature of everything. And, like, it felt like he was, like, kind of asking, you know, internally and almost asking his actors, like, is this really true? Like, are my films really like this? Like, is this, you know... Um, yeah. and then kind of trying to find his own purpose and meaning in life. And like, what is he really going to be remembered as, which you see explored with all these existential themes of aliens and stuff within the play rights play. Um, and it, you know, you have like, uh, you know, the, the dare kid, right. Yeah. Uh, which is just like really heartbreaking. And like, you know, I just want to, you know, people dare me to that way. They acknowledge my existence and uh, it's all of these things. And it almost feels like it's like Wes Anderson asking, like, okay, am I just doing this because I want people to think that, you know, oh, I'm interesting. I want to stand out. I want all, all these things. And it's like very much explaining this idea of like, you know, am I doing this just to, you know, 
uh, yeah. I guess stand out and just you know just because just so that way they'll think I'm I'm quirky and not like the other girls. Um, and like then you're seeing that manifested through the writer's own ideas and like again so many layers here. But um, I mean I could talk about this one for like an hour. But yes, like, I mean because there's a lot of subtext as well. It's all like yeah. where's a lot of times again, and I guess this is I I, know, I probably shouldn't stop comparing. The, this film to all of us and this other film but i feel like that's just the point of it like, i think that's the point extent. of this entire like film. you're meant to be comparing it so um but like yeah a lot of times i feel like the things are just sort of explicitly said and and the, you know it's like oh it's quirky how you're just saying what we're meant to be thinking mm -hmm. no it's not quirky like that whereas this i think there is so much subtext and it does come from these extra layers that you have like yeah we know that we know that the character is saying this but why does the writer write the character saying this? Like, right, because, I, it's that extra layer that I yeah. think provides more depth, provides more substance, and makes it a more sort of thematically consistent experience. Like we're not just getting this one layer of the character is saying this. Yeah. We're exploring why the writer is saying that, and is and the writer's process behind that. Right, because like I'm thinking very specifically about like the the window scenes between Jason Schwartzman and Scarlett Johansson. Like I think that's where you get so much thematic subtext. And yeah. even more than ever, you just have the characters just saying themes, right? Yes, yeah. But it works, as you say, because of these extra layers of, uh, like, meta-modernist subtext um, that allow those to then turn into questions of themes and not just the outright themes. Because yes. then now those are, like, setups that can then be paid off. Because, like, the character stories of Astro City don't really get paid off, and that's the point um and because they're really painting this like wide-ranging tapestry of themes that are going to get paid off for the writer you know you can't wake up if you don't fall asleep um and i i think the marriage uh it, once we get into the third act when all of the different themes kind of collide together and we quite literally break the fourth wall into another fourth wall <laughs> um yeah and then it's this collision of these two stories we've been following that marries all of the themes. And I love Jason Schwartzman's conversation with Margot Robbie, those two characters at the end. Yeah, I, I think that is brilliant. a standout scene. Yeah, and I think Jason yeah. Schwartzman as well deserves a lot of credit because even in an ensemble this big, he yeah. still is doing enough to really make you care about this character. And like, I think he is a sort of main emotional put a sort of focal point of the film i would argue yeah because i think he's supposed to be the main extension of the writer the writer yes yeah exactly so like and i, and I do think he deserves a lot of credit for you know really creating this character that feels like a character but is also you know it, it's 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 a lot of depth and layers within this one character that jason Swartz was able to yes. convey very well yeah i know absolutely absolutely um but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, Margot Robbie as well in that scene, I think is quite good as well. Like, yeah. it's one scene, but she's she's really, truly is fantastic in it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I really, really do think that this just works. Like, the more I think about it, the more I love it. Because it just, like, it, yeah. it, it feels like that perfect miracle of a film where everything just comes together um, and ends up just hitting and in really really working and i would very strongly suggest re-watching this because like especially in that final act there is so much going on with like the acting class and we're jumping all around and like yeah uh, i mean i think all the tones are balanced so well between like you know and all the different the scenes between the asteroid city stuff and then the you know the playwright and then the teleplay and everything and it does the same thing uh green boot west hotel does with like aspect ratios to signify different time periods and everything and i think that's done quite well um yeah. but like it, even so it is a lot to absorb on a first yeah, watch i did think the ending is particularly was the only bit that maybe didn't necessarily fully come together just because i thought it was too busy almost like it was yeah too, that, that, too again that's that's fair but it works better on rewatch i'm like, sure it does i'm sure it does yeah, once yeah. you have the once you actually know what like the the reveals yeah. are and you can just focus on the thematic subtext but that was like the one bit where i was like i'd rather get some more of that ri rigid wes anderson stuff i'd rather we yeah. go back to that just for a bit with no, yeah, yeah. Just but a bit too much going on trying to do maybe a bit too much but i do think it all did come together like, yeah i think it really works like yeah. the themes were all consistent throughout. So absolutely, absolutely. Oh, and then also, I just, I, I, I think that Wes Anderson's like a master of visual comedy. I think he does like what like all the best screwball comedies did in like the 30s and 40s. Um, I, I thought it was very, very funny. 
Um, yeah, and, and I mean, obvious. yeah, but, I, I less so much. I thought this film, yeah, it wasn't the most, I guess, enjoyable thing to sit through, but like there is a lot, there's almost, it, it gives you so much to think about that that's not what I think it's going for. Yeah, necessarily. yeah. No, it's, again, I don't really get a lot of the first reactions they were saying, oh, is this more of standard Wes Anderson fair? No, it feels like it's most very different. Film. Yeah. Yes, I, I'd argue, and even like French Dispatch, which was an anthology film, which is obviously, yeah. I, mean, I still think this is more, this is more breaking his usual, his usual style. Yeah, which I yeah. Appreciated. Like, because obviously, like, the, the, the form of his style is still very much the same, but like, I don't know, just, just everything with, like, I've never seen him explore themes and um treat his characters like this before um i I feel very much like we're breaking into a new era of wes anderson like french dispatch was kind of like uh like you know like noah bomback just kept on making like you know like divorce stories basically yeah and then it felt like marriage story he'd like you know noah bomback so much that like that was like the pinnacle of noah bombacking and then he was just like did that now i'm doing something weird and different with white noise and then now he's like writing barbie and stuff and it feels like he's going in a completely new direction it feels kind of similarly where like french dispatch was wes anderson wes andersoning so hard that like that was the end of that chapter and then now he's opening up kind of like a brand new chapter in his career with astro city yeah i can see that but i'd also argue the french dispatch was sort of a taster of what was to come like i feel like i feel like we might look back on the film like the french dispatch and note it as a transition period between that's fair yeah because i do think that almost i'd argue the grand budapest hotel was where we we got sort of the pinnacle of everything yeah and isle of dogs is just and then well isle of dogs in a weird case and then everything after the grand budapest hotel minus isle of dogs i don't know why you made that really um yeah yeah, but anything after that is then responding to grand Budapest hotel i think no very much so the earlier phase with the french dispatch being a sort of merging point of these two uh, yeah yeah I I, i'm excited that. about this new direction of Wes Anderson. a lot more yeah, so me than too. i was before yeah 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 no i, I saw this first immediately after it finished like thomas might actually like yeah this. i like, like <laughs> yeah <laughs> this might and actually work because like yeah it does it does feel very different and i i really do love this direction that Wes anderson's heading so for sure for sure absolutely absolutely um we can briefly chat about awards yeah because i mean we didn't it, even mention like the production design the, it the goes without saying like they built a yeah. whole last town and mountains and like they literally you can watch the behind the scenes like you can see them like forklifting all of the different mountains in the background in they just got like a flat desert like all the cactuses are also fake they built those but yeah I'm Every, uh, 100% believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, they just, it was a flat desert, and they, everything you see on screen, they built, and it is a full town. Yes, yeah, which is like how, obviously very impressive and should be noted at the end of the year, but could probably suffer from the same thing as the French Dispatch, where yeah. unless it comes along with the film, I don't know. I don't know. But that should be happening. Like, I, it's probably going to end up as one of my top ensembles of the year. Like, I thought the ensemble cast was great. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. They're, they're, I don't think they're what happened, really, though. Really like, the score also really good. I don't the know. The score, I don't know, because I even, like, I, I, I really like the score in the French Dispatch. I thought that was very noticeable. Yeah. But this, I, I don't know, it, it felt less, like, you It's I do hear there's a lot more soundtrack heavy, this film. It is, yeah, it's less sort of, it's, like, obviously it's still a good score. I mean, it's the splat, but I, I don't think it will need to be uh, recognized at the end Yeah. So I think production design is really the only thing. I mean, the costumes as well were quite good, but like, I don't know yeah. if that's like really necessary. I mean, the cinematography I thought was really, really good. But again, I don't know if they'll entirely go for that without like yeah. fully going for the film. I mean, as we no. said, Schwartzman's really good, but like, I mean, maybe it can get like a couple Globe Comedy noms, hopefully. But I mean, potentially, this batch couldn't. So no, I, yeah, I'm not sure. And this has received sort of similar levels of the claim yeah. dispatch so i think yeah. we're looking at production design max which should happen but yeah i don't know i just don't know if it's in a new phase of whether answer we're talking about is very awards friendly no yeah no i agree i agree but those are awards thoughts what are we feeling for a rating you know what i was gonna come in with a seven but i might push up to an eight talking about it the more you talk about it, the more you think about it I think this is an eight out of ten. Yeah, I think yeah, it's quite. Yeah, there's good. still there's still barriers. 
there's still the economy yeah. doesn't work there's still i do think it does lack a bit of warmth at points but yeah there's a there's a lot to appreciate with the film like this yeah so i'm throwing it a 10 out of 10. uh I also after thinking about it more i think it is my second favorite wes anderson film just behind grand budapest like i i really really love this movie like i think it's one of his best um yeah. just again love this direction wes is heading i i think this is absolutely brilliant um and i mean obviously like the comedy everything like it gave me all the wes anderson stuff that i wanted and then he also just made like a really brilliant film on top of it so yes uh, yeah taking those two things together of course i loved it uh this is in my top five of the year so far out of all 70 <laughs> new releases I've seen. so like yeah. yeah really really loved it um and yeah, those are our thoughts on Astrid City. We got Thomas to like Wes Anderson. Let's fucking go. We did. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, Yorgos is next. Now we got to get a Yorgos. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm less confident about four things. Significantly less confident about four things. So uh, we'll see about that one. <laughs> but that's our review of Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. Lots to talk about. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I know this is a bit divisive, a bit divisive, this film. Yeah. But um, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for plenty more awards and film and TV and a bit of music coverage as well. We're going to start talking about music, or at least I will, because it's fun. Music's fun. All right, but <laughs> until next time, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Stay safe, and goodbye.